Hi, this is JP Morgan. And this is Kenneth Merrill. Today on Slant Lens, we're gonna take a look at two cameras in the medium format range. We're gonna take a look at the Fujifilm GFX 50R. And the Hasselblad X1D2. Excellent company if you need an extra camera or a lens for a shoot, or you wanna try out a camera like the ones we're testing today. So we can take a look at all those cameras, they'll get it right out to you and you can ship it right back. They got us these two awesome cameras and a great sort of lenses. Came fast, we're gonna ship it right back to them. Excellent company, check them out. This is kind of like a slightly smaller version of the 50S, but it's, it's similar in almost every way except the body style. It's almost like a weird giant rangefinder camera, which is kind of funny. <laughs> it does. You know, the Hasselblad is just a sleek, wonderful look. It's just a great design, small in your hands, compact, a great camera to be able to use that way. I find the buttons, even though a lot of it is screen, is pretty intuitive to get to, but it's, it's a lot of internal menu screens. It's not a lot of buttons. Yeah, I agree. The Fuji has definitely gone with their classic design for Fujis with the aperture on the lens and lots of dials. A lot of programmable buttons on this body, which is kind of nice. So these two cameras have the same sensor, made by Sony, but it's really how the company, each one of the companies is going to interpolate that information to be able to give you an image. So the color science of the image. So we should want to look at that on these two and just see how they compare with each other, even though it's the same sensor. Do they look the same? Do they look different? We'll see. We'll see. Okay, so we've been out shooting the Hasselblad and the Fuji. Two great medium format cameras, same sensor size. Here's our first image with the Broad. We put them at kind of the color balance that they're both going to like and be the most happy with. Yeah, and out of the box, the Fuji is much warmer and uh, it's a little bit darker too. It's not quite as sensitive. So we've taken both images, kind of matched them reasonably and made them look both nice and we're gonna take a look at those. Yeah, if you get them back to the same color balance here, the, the Fuji is quite warm compared yeah. to the Hasselblad and just a very different look. So here's the uh, final images of the Disney Concert Hall. This is a beautiful image, beautiful sky that day, clouds. that's um, been matched, I mean, they look very similar. Very to one similar. Maybe a little bit warm. could have had a little more contrast to the Hasselblad. Maybe a tiny bit. The Hasselblad's a little more on the warm side, just a tiny bit. Fuji's a little more bluish, but you know, I love both the colors. Yeah. I really do. The detail in both these images is pretty incredible. When you look at just the point and the look of the metal in here, and when it's blown way up, I mean, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, there's an incredible amount of detail in both these images, and I love the tonality that you have. You have all these reflective curves, so you're getting yep. a lot of different colors in the metal and shades of bright and dark. Which I mean, you even see more in this mm -hmm. detail here. You see the blues, it kind of goes through the curve of that metal, and it's just really beautiful. And they both hold this extremely well. Yeah. I mean, it, you just see a great color gradation. But I like them both for different reasons. I think the Hasselblad feels a little more true to life. It has a more true to life color rendition for me. But the Fuji has this really beautiful, warm to cool sort of tonality going on. Well, when we look at this last image here, this the Hasselblad and the, there's just something about the color rendition I love in that Hasselblad platform. I, the color science is amazing to me. Yeah, it, it really is. All right, let's take a look at, uh, we shot this downtown, which cityscape, which this one we worked really hard to be able to get these to uh, match each other. We really wanted the color to match as good as possible to kind of mitigate any just out of camera, out of body, uh, issues. You know, in this low light situation, as hard as we tried, the color is so much richer in that Hasselblad image. I mean, yeah, uh, you look at the red neon strip there, it's just punchy, lost the red. real punchy really with punchy. the Hasselblad. Uh, even the green next to it is just really beautiful, you know, you have a great green, uh, just, there's just something, there's a, a depth and a, an intensity to the color that's really pretty. I mean, it, the Fuji is beautiful. There's no doubt about it. No doubt, but I, I agree with you. I like the color in the Hasselblad better on this image in particular. Yeah, on this image, it kind of shows in that way. Let's look at, we did some low light situation here as well. The uh, Yeah, we did one at 3200 ISO. Yeah, 3200 ISO, so you got these both at low light. And if you look at that same neon with that there, it's interesting to see. Yeah, even when you push up the ISO, it's, it, the color is held on to really well with the Hasselblad. I feel like you're actually getting a bit more out of the red with the Fuji in this image than you were in the last one. Really? Again, it seems like we see more of the <laughs> we red. We see more of the red, yeah. More, it's more under, it more feels underexposed. Exposed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you're holding it better. So they're both handling that higher ISO very similar. It seems like, though, that there's a little softer grain in the Hasselblad than there is in the yeah. Fuji. So let's look here. We did a strobe sync, and this is pretty important because this is a major difference between these two cameras. You cannot strobe sync on that Fuji above 
Two hundred. Uh, was it one one twenty fifth of a second? A one one twenty fifth of a second. Oh Super wow! Slow. Whereas the Hasselblad's got a leaf shutter, and you can sink all the way up to two thousandth of a second. So with these images, you can see you have very shallow depth of field in that Hasselblad because you can go to two thousandth of a second, and you can crush the background. Yeah, you can open up that aperture. Yep. So nice. Whereas really with the Fuji, you can't get that experience, and you'd have to use a high speed sync with your strobes, which. Uh, you can do, and I like, but it's just so much easier when you do it with the camera. And that's a major advantage with the hospital. When you're shooting out, doing fashion kinds of things, people, you just you have complete control with strobes and your uh, ambient light in that uh, setup. So if I if I shot with strobes, I would definitely pick the Hasselblad for that reason alone, because one one twenty fifth of the second is just too slow. Yeah. Here's a little portrait of uh, me on each of the the cam cameras. Fuji on the left, Hasselblad on the right. But Both dang, really nice. they're pretty close. Yeah, yeah. Pretty dang close. So yeah. That color is, I mean, I was able to correct them to get them pretty yeah. close to each other. Oh, look at those. Those look almost identical. They look very, very similar. Yeah. So, I mean, when you, when you mess with the color, you can get the color on these two to look pretty, pretty similar close. to each other. Uh, when we look at this portrait of our man here. Oh, yeah. look at the orange with the Hasselblad. Just a hmm. very, very strong orange, and yeah. strong colors. You see it in the red up in the helmet and that little yeah. sticker. The way we set this up is we, I sat at the table and we metered for exposure on the inside, and then we metered for exposure outside the window, and, we sh and then we also shot an exposure between those. So this photo here was metered for in the inside, exposed at 2.8 at like a 15th or 30th of a second. Obviously, the stuff outside the window is super blown out. I feel like the Hasselblad looks a little more blown out to me. You know what? You're kind of right. There is less information in the trees. I feel less information yeah. in the trees That's out true. there. Uh, yeah. yeah, it would make sense because the Fuji's a little darker out of the box. That's true. So You're it's a little a less half sensitive. Uh, yeah, fat, half a stop there. Yeah, that makes sense. If we go to the middle ones. So this is exposed in between where I was a little under and the outside was a little over and then we kind of brought them back together. Again, the Hasselblad is clipping. The car is, the car is hot a compared little, to the Fuji. A little brighter, yeah. That half a stop makes a difference. Mm -hmm. You probably want to underexpose the hotspot by Here. a little bit. Here's exposed for the outside. So the inside was very dark. Only the window outside was properly exposed. And then we raised the shadows up to see what kind of information we could get. You know, the Fuji's a little greener, but the Hasselblad has these magenta blotches. It does. It's interesting. The Hasselblad has kind of magenta blotches, but the Fuji is still, again, has that kind of over-sharpening, sharp yeah, grain look yeah. to me. It looks, it's really interesting. They both handle it really well, though. I mean, this, as far as we push it, we push these seven my, stops. Yeah, my shadow side was underexposed by seven stops in this image. So it's pretty incredible how much information both these cameras are holding. I, it, I would say it's almost a toss-up in terms of dynamic range here. Yeah. Maybe a slight edge to the Fuji because it held the highlights better. All right, so let's talk about these two cameras. I mean, just the, the experience of shooting with them. Uh, there's several things that are going on there, and I think there's several different uh, kind of thoughts that I have. So what's your first thought? Uh, my first thought is the Fuji, even though it's the more compact version of the 50, the GFX 50, it is still a beast of a camera. It's a I mean, it camera. is big. Um, and the lens is big, and it's... I like the ergonomics of Fuji typically, but I, this one felt a little clunky to me. Whereas on the opposite side, the Hasselblad was small, compact, felt like a mirrorless camera, really felt like a, a run and, and go kind of platform. Yeah. It just really felt, e felt easy to get around with it. Uh, ergonomically, it just fit in your hand. It was small. It didn't feel like a big clunky camera. I did wish the Hasselblad had a couple more dials and stuff. It was almost yeah. too sleek in terms of usability. I did like a little more of the tactile nature of the Fuji. They usually have that going. Fuji's for always got that going. Whereas the Hasselblad is really back to just it's a lot of menu stuff, a lot mm -hmm. of making it happen. But I didn't find the menus hard to get through. They were work very with. simple. Very simple to get to where you needed to go and to make things happen on it. So for me, I think the Hasselblad, the autofocus was a little slow, and I think Fuji beats it out in that category. Yeah, definitely. I feel like the Fuji was about as fast as any other Fuji camera I've shot. The Hasselblad hunted a lot more, even if nothing moved while you were yeah. shooting. So you're really making a compromise there between color and, because I feel like the Hasselblad color, I mean, you and I both said it, we, when we first shot the Hasselblad, we are going, oh my word, I have not yeah. seen color like that in a long time. Yeah. It just made me excited. I wanted to go out and shoot, you know, and... I feel like it's more of a deliberate camera, you know, that you're going to be shooting with it on set, you're going to be shooting portraits. I just feel like it's, it works, and uh, I think in that way the color, color science is pretty amazing. 
but maybe if you're trying to do more street photography type stuff, things that are going to require more speed, I might lean more towards the Fuji. Even though it is bigger and clunkier, harder to carry around, it's just a little bit faster to use. I don't know if either of these are really street camera. Well, I don't know. I talked <laughs> to somebody who was walking around using the GFX 100 to shoot portraits, you know, oh. and that's a big beast of a camera, so. Well, I, just a major uh, competitive, a head-to-head -head kind of feeling between these two cameras. Uh, they both have great, uh, great strong image qualities, uh, really great detail, great color. I think Hotspot maybe edges out a little bit in the color, mm -hmm. edges out a little bit in that ergonomics, being able to use it, whereas the Fuji edges out a little bit in the autofocus. So, mm -hmm. well, it's a head-to-head -head battle. It's hard to, to create a, you call a winner here by any means. Although for me, the knockout for me, and this is just because of what I do, is the strobe mm -hmm. and syncing up to the two thousandth of a second because I shoot a lot of stuff on set. I'm shooting uh, where I'm trying to combine strobes with ambient all the time, and that is a huge advantage. Yeah, if I shot strobes, I would definitely go with the Hasselblad. Yeah. All right, so two great cameras. I uh, hope you enjoy this uh, look at those two excellent cameras. More camera reviews to come, comparisons coming, and uh, we hope you enjoy this. So make sure you subscribe, follow us here on the Slant Lens, be a part of our family, and keep those cameras rolling. And keep on clicking.